I'm just going to talk a little bit today about, I guess, some of the practicalities that Dean just talked about, um, kind of how we've implemented some of the things to embody that strategic board leadership uh, within our board. Um, and then first I'll just back up and say where we're coming from. I mean, I think this is probably a pretty relatable story to a lot of the co-ops here, um, either in their past or their pu future, uh, or <laughs> hopefully not their future, but <laughs> the past or their present. Um, you know, we kind of uh, struggled along uh, recruitment or day-to-day -day work was very much catch as catch can, all hands on deck. Um, everything was kind of everybody's job, I think, and I say this as I was not necessarily a board member at the time when that was true. So the board it, as a whole was kind of responsible for all of the recruitment of members and vetting and the entire process from tip to tail. Um, and, you know, we had committees, but they could, even in the useful committees, I think were languishing sometimes or just continued into perpetuity didn't uh, necessarily have a real embodied purpose. Um, and so maybe not using whoop, the best of everyone's time to uh, get the work done that we needed to do. Um, so why would we want to change? I think that's probably pretty self-evident from what I just described. But um, we want to change to embody the kind of strategic leadership we're all talking about today and that courage. Um, to strengthen our co-op and become more innovative and um, kind of our tagline right now is the co-op for the 21st century. So what do we need to do that? Um, we want to do all these cool things. We want a solidarity model. We want to merge. Um, we want to strengthen our regional cooperative economy. Um, and so that required a strong board. And some of the things that we, uh, and some of the qualities of that I think are really strong strength in recruitment, um, developing our staff, our, our, our board as well, and um, retaining folks. So not one and done, continuing on for multiple terms, that sort of thing. Giving people meaningful work to do that really plays to their strengths and interests why they join the board in particular. Um, and also respecting folks' time and their, uh, in terms of having productive meetings that don't go on all night, and also um, upping stipends to respect people um, paying them for their time. So in a little bit about how we did this, how we've kind of come across some of these changes, um, a couple of years ago we changed our bylaws to institute a nominating committee um, with uh, some connected, well-connected folks in our community, both on the storefront and the uh, consumer side now that we're a solidarity model, we make sure that both are represented. Um, and that group is responsible for kind of recruitment and tracking and um, identifying people and also helping us, helping the board vet them during the, um, the election process. Um, oh, I'm a data wonk. <laughs> so we've got this screening matrix, which I think has been really helpful for um, both identifying uh, the qualities that we have within our board right now, like reflecting it back on ourselves and seeing where our strengths lies um, and kind of intersecting that with what our strategic initiatives are and what strengths do we really need to develop. And so we can use that kind of for internal development as well as kind of external development and evaluating the different uh, candidates that we have to serve on the board. Um, we uh, evolved our committee process. So um, now we have committees, um, NOMCOM accepted, uh, that are one year, they are chartered. There's a, a document that cites policies, why we're having this committee uh, and what the intended function of it is doing. And then we revisit and kind of remark on those, reevaluate the, um, the presence of those committees within our, our, our board um, at our annual retreat. So it's kind of a, an intentional look at why we are doing the things that we are doing and do we still need to do them. And I think uh, at, the, at our last retreat, we continued all our communities, or all our um, committees, because um, they're doing meaningful work. And um, the charter was reestablished re with maybe different strategic initiatives that we'll continue to work on in the future. So all that great stuff said, um, kind of as Dean said, there's still a lot to do. Uh, we still have a, 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 a road to hoe. Um, I think with the NOMCOM we're still struggling with, um, and I'm sure this will come up later on maybe too, of uh, recruiting people, I think, from the diverse spectrum of humanity. Um, we wanna make sure that uh, we are representing our uh, both workers internally to the store and our consumer members as well. Um, and cross that with uh, a geographic complexity. We have two stores across two different cities and one place where we meet. So um, increasing them that uh, geographic uh, representation is important as well. Um, and kind of furthering the integration of how we're out there and getting the word out and pushing that cooperative economy and the cooperative movement. Um, still working on that stuff. Sometimes our committees have overlapping functions and we want to make sure that two people aren't doing same thing or 
that we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's and not letting things fall to the wayside. So that's still a challenge. Um, and it, I think an ongoing challenge is just kind of creating that space still where we can disagree and we can talk about challenging things. Like we're dealing with a lot of challenges right now and creating that space to productively talk about it and not just disagree or agree about things, but actually talk about these really hard cultural issues and creating that space for a transformative board. Um, that's a challenge and I think everyone struggles with that and um, we gotta keep working on it. And I think we're all talking about that stuff today. So, don't wanna end on a bad note. <laughs> work to do, but um, it's exciting and empowering. And I think when doors close, windows open, and create space for new opportunity and change. And I look forward to talking about that more with you all today. So thank you. <laughs>